Hi, my name is John Buse. I'm at the University of North Carolina and I've been asked by IDOC to talk about the recent publications surrounding glargine and cancer. Uh, so glargine, as you know, is a long-acting, once-a-day insulin analog, which has become very commonly used in the treatment of type 2 diabetes, easy to titrate to control fasting glucose and lower A1C. There are four papers that were published uh, in the last uh, month, um, actually in in June uh, in Diabetologia regarding the relationship of glargine and cancer. Um, and the papers are internally inconsistent. Um, and what I mean by that is the, the paper that has the strongest message that there's a link between glargine and cancer um, actually shows that overall the cancer rates are lower in the glargine treated patients but in patients at higher doses of glargine perhaps there's an association with cancer. The problem with these kinds of analyses is that they don't come from databases where you can control for all kinds of confounding factors and I just want to provide two you know very concrete examples. So one is that obesity is associated with increased risk of cancer. And in fact, more overweight patients with diabetes are more likely to be treated with insulin. Um, and therefore, uh, theoretically, you might end up with a link between insulin treatment and cancer that wasn't directly related to the insulin therapy, but in fact, uh, related to the association between obesity and cancer. A second is uh, metformin seems to have some pro-apoptotic effects uh, for at least pancreatic cancer um, and breast cancer, two of the most common cancers. Uh, other cancers haven't been examined, but as an example, if you were doing a comparison among patients with diabetes, the insulin-treated patients are arguably less likely to be on metformin. Maybe what the real deal is that metformin is associated with benefits with regards to cancer, which don't uh, which aren't adequately controlled for in these kinds of analyses. So the problem is in these kinds of administrative data sets, we don't know what the exposure is to other drugs, what the exposure is to other risk factors like cigarette smoke, smoking, you know, what are the relationships to BMI. Um, so the, uh, the association, though uh, apparently reasonably strong, hasn't been adequately controlled for uh, with other factors. Well, there are three other papers uh, in the publication. Um, uh, two of them suggest a different kind of association uh, with different cancers, and a fourth one uh, actually suggests that there's no association at all. So it's kind of a mixed bag. I think most people who have reviewed the data carefully think it's important to put it out there. It's something that we need to do much, uh, much more uh, specific kinds of studies where we can look at uh, many other areas in these individual patients uh, that develop cancer uh, in the setting of diabetes. Uh, but for now, I think most people are not changing their practice habits with regards to prescribing insulin in general or prescribing glargine in particular, um, and uh, additional studies are underway. Um, so I think for primary care doctors, the, the most important uh, underlying news is it's not time for panic. Insulin is a great drug for lowering A1C and it's something we need to continue using in our patients uh, while it's being further studied. Uh, so for IDOC, this has been John Buse. Thank you very much.